This is section five of the complete works of George Saville, first Marquis of Halifax. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Advice to a Daughter Friendships by George Saville. Read by John Greenman. I must in a particular manner recommend to you a strict care in the choice of your friendships. Perhaps the best are not without their objections, but, however, be sure that yours may not stray from the rules which the wiser part of the world hath set to them. The leagues of offensive and defensive seldom hold in politics, and much less in friendships. The violent intimacies, which, once broken, of which they scarce ever fail, make such a noise the bag of secrets untied they fly about like birds let loose from a cage and become the entertainment of the town besides these great dearnesses by degrees grow injurious to the rest of your acquaintance and throw them off from you there is such an offensive distinction when the dear friend cometh into the room that it is flinging stones at the company who are not apt to forgive it do not lay out your friendship too lavishly at first since it will like other things be so much the sooner spent neither let it be too sudden a growth for as the plants which shoot up too fast are not of that continuance as those which take more time for it so too swift a progress in pouring out your kindness is a certain sign that by the course of nature it will not be long lived you will be responsible to the world if you pitch upon such friends as at the time are under the weight of any criminal objection in that case you will bring yourself under the disadvantages of their character and must bear your part of it choosing implieth approving and if you fix upon a lady for your friend against whom the world shall have given judgment, tis not so well-natured as to believe you are altogether averse to her way of living, since it doth not discourage you from admitting her into your kindness. And resemblance of inclinations being thought none of the least inducements to friendship, you will be looked upon at least as a well-wisher, if not a partner with her in her faults if you can forgive them in another it may be presumed you will not be less gentle to yourself and therefore you must not take it ill if you are reckoned a croupier and condemned to pay an equal share with such a friend of the reputation she hath lost if it happeneth that your friend should fall from the state of innocence after your kindness was engaged to her you may be slow in your belief in the beginning of the discovery, but as soon as you are convinced by a rational evidence, you must, without breaking too roughly, make a far and a quick retreat from such a mistaken acquaintance. Else, by moving too slowly from one that is so tainted, the contagion may reach you so far as to give you part of the scandal, though not of the guilt. This matter is so nice that as you must not be too hasty to join in the censure upon your friend when she is accused so you are not on the other side to defend her with too much warmth for if she should happen to deserve the report of common fame besides the vexation that belongeth to such a mistake you will draw an ill appearance upon yourself and it will be thought you pleaded for her not without some consideration of yourself the anger which must be put on to vindicate the reputation of an injured friend may incline the company to suspect you would not be so zealous if there was not a possibility that the case might be your own for this reason you are not to carry your dearness so far as absolutely to lose your sight where your friend is concerned because malice is too quick-sighted it doth not follow that friendships must be blind there is to be a mean between these two extremes 
else your excess of good nature may betray you into a very ridiculous figure and by degrees who may be preferred to such offices as you will not be proud of your ignorance may lessen the guilt but will improve the jest upon you who shall be kindly solicitous to procure a meeting and innocently contribute to the ills you would avoid whilst the contriving lovers when they are alone shall make you the subject of their mirth and perhaps with respect to the goddess of love be it spoken it is not the worst part of their entertainment at least it is the most lasting to laugh at the believing friend who was so easily deluded let the good sense of your friends be a chief ingredient in your choice of them else let your reputation be never so clear it may be clouded by their impertinence it is like our houses being in the power of a drunken or a careless neighbor only so much worse as that there will be no insurance here to make you amends as there is in the case of fire to conclude this paragraph if formality is to be allowed in any instance it is to be put on to resist the invasion of such forward women as shall press themselves into your friendship where if admitted they will either be a snare or an encumbrance end of advice to a daughter friendships <laughs>